Hello everyone. Sound check. Yeah, it's we're starting off always with the voice with no visual. Man, it's exciting every single time we have to start. It's like, you know, pressure builds up. I have, I just want to show you here. Boom. I have a nice tazzina di caffè. This, for all of you, for those unfortunate people who don't know what this is, this is the proper thing to have espresso in, you know? So, there's only... Le oh, I see some. So, I had to have coffee because I had... It's like the worst working conditions ever. I had, like, less, I would say, how much less? Maybe 50% less coffee intake than I usually do have. So, you know, I went to recover. And these are very nice small bar uh, cups, which actually... All right, this is made in Italy. Porcellana Vera. Made in Italy. I think Valeria, my wife... Thank you. My wife got it from a bar. So this is Florence, people. Look at this. You know, all right. So we got the coffee. I'm gonna put it here next to this, which is the second. I'll put the cup here. Second thing of the day, which is the USB e licensor that Steinberg Steinberg makes. So this is the license control device, also known as e licensor, the dreaded small USB dildo that uh, every uh, Steinberg user has to have. So this is, for those of you who are familiar with iLock, this is the same thing as the iLock. So because I had I had to use Cubase, I had to get these. This was, unfortunately for me, the last licensor USB thing that I had to buy. So it comes up like this. Let's do an unboxing video. You know, it's like a little nice thing. And it's got this tiny USB pen inside. And uh, that's it. You just plug it in and it, it's used to sync with all the licenses that um, that uh, uh, Steinberg makes. So that's it. We're going to put it here, you know, next to the coffee. Now, Warren, there's not much else to say. It's still a very sunny day. My little mixing plant is having a lot of fun because of the sunlight. So I was saying worst worst conditions ever because I didn't have enough coffee and we're gonna work off a software that I haven't been used. I tracked it down. I haven't been used. I haven't used it since 2004, people. 2004. So I remember I made an EP, like a solo EP on in 2004 called Rock Fusion. It had four songs in it. And I played keyboards in there. And there's a few guest stars. Very nice. You know, as Trump would say. Very nice. But, um, and then I used Cubase for that one project. But I had not been using Cubase before. And I had not used Cubase after. So it's, what is it? 2004, 2020? It's 16 years, people. 16 years since I have been using Cubase. So as usual, before I forget, I should have an amazing shortcut that just puts things in context. And this is Cubase. Bada boom. So I, truth be told, the USB licensor came yesterday in my mailbox and I installed Cubase 10, Pro 10.5 yesterday evening so i had a little bit of time to play with it so i'm not completely completely unaware of how this thing works but it's definitely gonna be fun because i'm looking at the interface and i'm like you know i'm kind of doing kind of doing this face you know this one which this thing has a story which maybe one day I'll have time to say. I can't reveal all my secrets, you know, in one stream or in a bunch of streams. So it pretty much looks the same as the others, uh, sequencers, for sure, or DAWs, D-A-Ws. But I won't be as fast as 
I am with Pro Tools, for example, which is cool, which is cool because we're gonna we're gonna tackle one topic that in music production comes all the time. Is this DAW better than any other DAW? Is this engine, sound engine, sounds sounding better than the other sound engine that Logic has? So we could go on for hours, we won't go in there, but I guarantee you that there's no real limitation to as to which DAW you should use. I don't know what you use, feel free to write it in chat. If you're a Pro Tools person, if you're an Ableton Live person, let's list them all. If you're a PreSonus Studio One person, if you're an Avid Pro Tools person, if you are a Steinberg Cubase uh, person, if you are a Nuendo person, some people use Nuendo as well, which is even more advanced. Uh, uh, what else is out there? There's Horizon Mix Bus, people. There's Reason, there's... Mm. <clears throat> what's out there as well. There's Pyramix, Pyramix by Merging Technologies. Uh, there's Samplitude. There's, man, now I'm running, oh, there's Digital Performer by Mark of the Unicorn. I used that in 99. I was, I was 17, 18 years old when I used Mark of the Unicorn um, Digital Performer. They're all amazing. They all work. They're all perfectly fine. The thing is you should use what you feel most comfortable with. And uh, definitely uh, use what you're comfortable with. So why am I using something I'm not comfortable with? Let me ask myself this question. Why am I doing this? Well, there's a team of people that I'm writing music for, for um, a video game that's going to maybe be out next year. And um, they, they, they heard some of the pieces and they're fine. But there's some of the developers, they have Cubase for cutting audio and stuff and things. So they kindly asked me to move to Cubase for the, you know, aforementioned reasons. We we have to use a platform that we're all together with. And so that's how I, I ended up here. But I also had this idea of doing mix loop. So mix loop is something that is, we're going to start off, kick off today. And uh, it's something that we're going to use as a recurring event, I would say. So we're going to do this mix loop where you send me tracks and I choose, I pick one song and I mix this song live because I've been thinking about it and I just want to put this out there. There's no sound engineer that does it. I'm really hoping there's no sound engineer that does it. You know, I know, you know, you can play piano and people call tunes and you rearrange them on the fly, but there's no, there's no engineer that, that mixes on the fly something that people gave me. So it's usually like... I have this song, I've been working with this song, and I want to tell you about this mix, which is all amazing, but there's no, like, they, there's no jazz improvisation on mixing. We should have it, I thought, you know? So that's the jazz improv class of mixing. And uh, we're also using a non, non-standard DAW for me, so you have to bear with me. We'll use all 100% standard Cubase plugins, which again, I haven't been using for 16 years. So, but that should be pretty fun. I mean, there should be, the equalizers should be equalizing, right? And the compressors should be compressing and the gates should be gating and the expanders, you guessed it, should be expanding. So that could be fun, you know, that, that, that will work. Uh, as long as we're gonna use equalizers as compressors and compressors as EQs, we're gonna sound great. So the song I have here, I, I just want to talk a little bit about why I picked this song and why I didn't pick the humongous number of songs that I got. I think I got around 28 submissions, 29, which is a whole lot. I don't know, maybe somebody who won 350 Grammys is like, this is nothing, you know. I get 3,000 millions, you know, but, uh, but, 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 but I don't. So uh, 29 is pre pretty much a whole lot of tracks to listen to for me. So uh, I didn't pick any of the submissions that I got in the last day and a half. I went back to something that I got sent, I think, three weeks, four weeks ago by a friend of mine. His name is Chris. He's been developing, he's been building up a music school in uh, Florida, I think near Miami or something like that. And he he had some some trouble with, I think, weather like years ago because of, you know, Tornadoes, what is it there? Tornadoes? No, it's like uh, typhoon, cyclones, cyclops, 
cyclones, aliens, I don't know. Uh, and he kind of got back up, rebuilt this music school where he teaches engineering. We, we kind of studied together for around three, like a semester, I think, years and years ago. And then he got back up and running. And after a short while, coronavirus kicked in and the quarantine and all of these issues. So he wrote me an email where he said, well, dude, I was going to mix this, which is a song I think that was out on a mixing contest. It's something that has been out for quite a while. I don't think he recorded it. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, I think the artist's name is Trivial with a U, not with an A, Trivial. And uh, this, this guy makes this kind of music that we'll listen to. And he sent it to me and he said, well, if you want to mix it, you have nothing to do, you can mix it. One of the main reasons that he sent it to me was, and, and I quote him, and this is like very flattering, thank you very much. He said like, I've been listening to some records you've done, and I think he mentioned two records uh, in the rock kind of area, The Midnight Shower and Sway. It's two indie rock, rock slash maybe a little bit of pop oriented, but I would still call them rock records that I've made at Fuse Room. And he said, I really like how you do background vocals. And I was like, all right, that's fun. Uh, he said, would you be able to show me how you work on, on backing vocals, on, on doubles and stuff? So he said, I have nothing to send you right away that I have done because the school has been down, they went up and stuff. But I have these, for example, which is a very simple song, but has, um, you know, pretty much all, like half of it is vocals and half is just, you know, backing tracks. So... I went back to this thing because I remember it was one of the songs that had 16 tracks, although they're stereo, so we're looking probably at around, you know, what is it, maybe 30, 28? They're not all stereo, but I would say that probably like, you know, could be 30, but it's like, it looks like a 16, you know, track songs, song. So um, I, this is going to be a lot more convenient for me. So I apologize if I haven't picked any of you any of the pieces you've sent me, but I will, we will do your songs. Don't worry about that. They're not lost. They're not erased. I, I wrote a, an Excel spreadsheet where I have all of your submissions and all of your emails. So if this thing picks up, which is now the amazing mix loop, right? Like everybody, you go out there in the street, you know, keep your distance with other people, but then you, you tell the other guy, you know, you know, Mick Super's like, of course, it's the guy that goes there, you know, you send him a song and he mixes his live. Uh, the, the only parameters that you have to use for this mix loop are as follows. First one, you must be a new face. So if we worked together, you can't send stuff for mix loop. I want to emphasize this. This does not come from being evil, you know, or being marketing oriented or and nothing like that. A lot of people I've worked with, I know have a lot of songs and they're maybe extremely well produced or ready, sort of ready, you know, mix ready. And they might obliterate the younger guys, younger in the sense of less experienced ones who might be at the, their first songs. They might be not able to mix as, as, you know, as good as the other guy does. So I want to make it so that this emphasizes the fact that we're going to use songs from people that are new. We're going to, you know, welcome the newcomers. Once one guy has been, or, you know, or girl, whoever, you know, has sent me tracks, has been used for one episode, he can no longer send it to me again. So, you know, makes him no longer an old face. So that's the first, first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do as parameters is you are not going to get your mix back because this is not a mi free mix service. I don't, I, I thought about it and I was like, this is actually kind of a cool trap to do. The reason being is we're doing these for the knowledge factor. I don't want people to be sending stuff because they know that if they get picked, they get a free mix. You don't get free mixes with me. You don't. So just give up. You know, I might be the most horrible mixing engineer in the world. You're still going to pay for the horrible mix I'm going to do. <laughs> That's how it works. I'm so evil. Uh, and uh, so there's no free mixing. But because of this initiative and because it's knowledge based and it's free, I don't want people to be swarming up, you know, and swamping my mailbox in the hope to get a free mix. You know, so I don't want to do that. It, so you can copy what I'm doing. If you like it, you know, go back, look at the video and do the same exact moves with the same exact plugins I have. 
you know, I dare you, do it. And it will sound pretty much exactly the same. Make it better, make it better. Don't just copy me, make it better. But um, this is still going to force you to think and do something that is more educational for you and everybody else. The third parameter, that was the third one. Man, the coffee has kicked in because before I could remember the third one. Hold on, there's a third one. There's a third one. The third one is I could look at this. I could look at the tip. Man, nobody's helping here. I don't remember. There's a third thing. So you gotta be new. You're not getting your mix back. Oh yes, you gotta be unsigned. So if you're a new face and you are not going to get the mix back, but you're still a signed artist with an indie label, with a producer's group, with a compilation, with a huge major label, whatever, you cannot send these here. Uh, reason being, again, it has to be newcomers, has to be new people, has to be people that maybe are also scared, I would be, to send somebody a mix, you know, send somebody like me a mix and say like, my God, this guy's also, you know, <laughs> maybe, or I don't know, I hope you like how I mix stuff, but... It's still a very strong commitment to say, dude, this is my song. Because it also implies that it's sort of finished to a stage where it goes. So I got a lot of amazing tunes. I got a lot of cool tunes that are also just ideas. So I'm going to talk about that maybe in an episode where we listen to them and I can pinpoint some of the stuff. Uh, so I can I just do a review maybe of the songs and stuff. But I, I also got stuff that's pretty, pretty well done. And I was like, all right, this is this is cool. This is, I don't know, how come nobody ever mixed this song? You know, maybe they did. Who knows? So before I cut my neck with my headphones, uh, let's take a look at the session as it is proposed through... Cubase. So we're doing good on stream, right? Yes. So everything is as big as it can be. So this is Cubase. Let me take a look at this thing because we're going to navigate through this together. I guarantee you I can drive. I have my license, <laughs> but it's just going to take me a while to get used to the, the steering wheel and the gears and stuff. So Cubase actually works with three panes, which is not three types of pain. <laughs> it's three panes. So three panels, three tabs. So the left tab, the bottom tab, and the right tab. So right tab seems to be utility. Ooh, super meter. Hello there. That's pretty cool. We're going to keep it like this, people. Control room is disabled. Okay, I don't know. This is going to be fun. I guarantee you, you're going to have fun. And then the bottom one makes pretty much sense, right? And the left one is the inspector. All right, nothing new here. Every doll has this pretty much. There's a left pane of inspector. There's a right pane of metering, utility, and, and stuff. I don't want to say bad words. And there's a bottom pane that has the mixing guide. I guess if you have MIDI, MIDI would also be here, right? So let's, let's listen to this thing. So there's a stereo out, there's colors, there's a couple input output, there's a stereo out. All right, let's call this mix bus. I'm going to call this, you know, by the name. So let me see who's here. Okay, Gabriele is here. Hello, Gabriele. Angelo is here. Hi, Angelo. Hope you're still connected. Ah, Angelo was a hard one to catch because he's so busy in Florence, you know. Oh, my God. Sebastian, hello there. Davide, hello again. Tigi, hello again. I know some of the nicknames I'm recognizing. So community message, how is it called? Community announcement. If you are not following Fuse Room on Twitch, please do so. Reason being, when we get to 50 followers, we get Twitch affiliate. And so we're kind of like, we're awesome in a way that no one can actually describe, maybe because nothing actually changes. But we're going to make Fuse Room, the channel, awesomely affiliate with affiliated with twitch for whatever that means maybe we get better smileys maybe we get i have no idea maybe we get i don't know i i don't want to guess so mixer the mixer looks pretty good uh we have a stereo in which we're not gonna use we could mute this guy right and then we have a mix bus. We have all of the tracks. The tracks get connected here. So we have drums, cymbals, percussions, bass, bass two. Ooh, two basses. Oh my God, this is going to be suddenly a very hard song to mix. Synths and SFX, strings, verse vox, verse vox two, verse vox three, verse vox four, verse vox five, verse vox six, chorus vox, and chorus vox. So 
there's no backing vocals. Uh, but I think there is. These two people are backing vocals. So the first thing I would do is, and this I already know I cheat, if you press Alt and F3, you kind of make your uh, mixer disappear. And with F3, we go back in mixing view and uh, in the amazing... Let me make this super big. See, I'm not completely a moron here. I know my way around. F3, you know, I'm a secret Cubase user. Nobody knew. So this is our mix bus, which is kind of scary to have up there. Can I move it? No. All right. Uh, set track type filter. Okay, I can filter stuff. That's fantastic. So how about we listen to the song? Let me do the one same thing everybody would ever would ever do in these situations, which is save, obviously. And let me pull down the mix bus fader. Uh, uh, let's press play, which should be spacebar. It is. It's alright now. There's a few more days for us now. And now we've made up our minds to see this through. We've worked it out a little wiser than before. It's alright now. We spend a while in the cloud. It hardly shows the other hour. It's alright now. Ooh, cool. It's alright now. There's a few less tears to cry. Now. It's alright now. We spoke another thousand again. There's a few more days before we want to last. Now we're at still. And now we made up our minds to receive a disaster. So, simple song, very not simple to mix, I would say, in a way. So I paved myself in a corner. Or maybe some people are like, ah, it's super easy to mix. I don't think it is. There's some sounds that deceive you into thinking that everything's ready, 
but I guarantee you, you won't be able to get out of that sound that they have because you don't have, you know, separation of tracks, all those things. So that's 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 cool. So I, one thing I noticed here is that there's a very, very nice master meter which records loudness and all that stuff. This is a godsend for everybody who's doing post-production and stuff because it's just integrated within very easy to read stuff. And I was looking at the fact that the um, scale that it seems to be set as reference looks as if it's like a EBU 128, uh, R28 128. So it should, which is also German uh, TV standard here. And it uh, looks like, you know, Steinberg is German. So, you know, also Europe, I think EBUR28 is the most widely adopted in Europe. But there's France, France that do, does it differently. Italy does it differently, has AGCOM. Um, Spain? No, maybe Spain doesn't. Uh, UK doesn't. But I think there's also, of course, there's Australia, there's Japan. There's a lot of different formats and stuff. But this is very cool. So what I did, I switched it to K13 scale. I want to have this big zero guy here be my uh, target level. So we are going to send this thing to mastering. We could we could exceed a little bit and go K12. But we're going to try and stay at 14. I never, I never usually behave. I always kind of go a little bit farther than that. But if I take the 12 and I know I usually go a little bit over, I'm going to be way over my over. So it's like when you're late and you know you're always late. So you put your clock, you know, forward just to make yourself be on time. That's kind of the same thing. <laughs> I'm sure nobody knows what I'm talking about. So... Tracks. How many tracks do we have? 16. What tracks do we have here? We have drums. Let's hear the drums. See, these already sounds really good. This sounds like Stylus RMX. These, I think it's Stylus RMX. And I might be very well right. Sounds like Spectrosonics. Peter, is it you? <laughs> Symbols. They sound like symbols. Now, some people would put marker in here. I really have no idea how to marker this stuff. So I won't. But it looks pretty clear what's the chorus and stuff. Percussion. I think with control, yes, we can do the XOR solo, which I love. Okay, okay, okay. We can work with this. This, this is cool. Bass. All right. Man. That's a strong bass line. Bass 2. What does bass 2 do? So a song with two basses. All right. All right. We're going to go really, really like academic on this one. Uh, guitar. Awesome. Love how it's played. Very raw, but very nice. Synths and effects. That also awesome. We're gonna we're gonna wash these in so much reverb. It's gonna be painful for you to hear. Strings, uh, strings. I kind of really felt they were completely out of place. The sound is great. The just the way they pop up because of the ambience. Strings are so every acoustic instrument is so reverb dependent. They have ambience. Sounds good. Okay, verse one. This guy is our lead. Now oh, there's a few less tears to cry. So these two are the leads, definitely now, always doubling himself, right? And now we right now. Alright, this is backing vocals. And this is still backing vocals. Oh, there's a few more days for us. It is. Nice, beautiful voice, this guy. Nice. I hope he made a lot of records afterwards because the songs are fun. We won't ever regret the way we were. We won't ever forget the things we heard when things went sour. So this is a typical situation where you do get effects printed with the stamps. It happens a lot. And people usually mean, dude, I really like this reverb or effect that's there. Please don't change it. So they, they they prevent you from changing it by giving you the stems that already have it in there. It's usually a hint at the fact that they don't want you to maneuver that much around. You know? But it's okay. We won't maneuver around. So, levels. Everything is kind of a little bit too hot for me. 
So I don't want to move this thing, but I'm, I want to trim it. And I remember that Cubase, my friend Cubase had trims, right? So we can take two routes. One is the strip route, which is not what you're thinking, thinking about. It's not that route. It's the, the channel strip route. Or we could take the, okay, EQ route, that makes sense, but that's not what we want. These are sends, routing, that's fine, inserts. I think I'm gonna go, go the insert route because if I fiddle with the strip route, for as much as I like stripping, uh, <laughs> it's, this, this looks very, very cool, amazing. Like EQ, comp, gate. So what they did here, they put, Oh my God, tools set, holy, holy moly. Noise gate goes into comp, goes into EQ, goes into tools, goes into saturation. People, this is fantastic. And limiter, Steinberg, why haven't you called me to let me know this? This is pretty good. Why is everything here red though now? Ah, because when you touch it, it goes on, which makes sense because you know you touch it so you probably want to use it so i'm not sure what i want to do i might go can i bypass the whole thing show one channel strip type no uh i want to bypass them all i th oh i know how it's done hold on select everything and st strip this alt shift alt control no not have oh there we go there we go Memorize this. Alt Shift, Alberto. Memorize this. Alt Shift. So let's let's go like so. No EQ, no strips. For now, uh, we're gonna go the insert way, which is what we're used to, I think, from normal from the normal days of of life. So one thing that Cubase is amazing at is key commands. Like I think a little bit like Pro Tools. So I would give you this suggestion, which, which I remember. Uh, because some people here, I want it to be educational in this sense. A, some people have never seen Cubase. I don't know, maybe here everybody's a Cubase user. I hope not. <laughs> like everybody's a master, Hans Zima, uh, composer. My God, I hope you're not as such. But um, if you're not masterful as Hans Zima, uh, you probably don't know Cubase as, as I do, uh, like the same as I don't. You probably don't as well. So one thing I remember is key commands. Let's make these, you know, fruitful for people who have never seen Cubase. Key commands are under edit key commands and they have the shortcuts for everything. So prepare to be amazed. The first shortcuts, shortcut, singular, that Alberto wants you to use once you use key commands is to set the shortcut to access the key commands and I'm going to leave it there for three seconds. The first shortcut you should set for key commands is how to open the actual key commands. So you go up here, you search for key. You actually search for key commands because I think there's a lot of functions here. And there's one function here called key commands. So because I was kind of smart yesterday, I already said it, but forgot it. So now I remember control alt K. So what you do here normally looks like this. There's nothing here in keys. You go here, very old school, type in your shortcut, and you can press K, for example, right? He's going to tell you, look, you can set K, but this is already edit group setting on selector track. So you're going to make a mess out of this. So we're going to go Control-Alt-K, and Control-Alt-K is actually not used by anything. So we're going to go Assign, and you can make your own preset. Obviously, when I put mine, my name just doesn't fit. It's too long. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, all right. Erase that. Twitch, go back. Uh, so key commands, you know, control alt key. Why do I want you to do that? Because every time you have a function that you really know you're going to use a lot, you should set a key command or go explore which key command is actually... Um, assigned to that function because there's a lot of functions that already have odd keys it's just i don't know them you don't know them so key commands is actually not scripted there's no key command to open the key commands tab but they made it possible so now whenever i want to do it i go Control alt k why didn't it work oh my god i didn't save it all right 
Let's redo it. Yes, I didn't save it. But I had my preset, right? So why? Does it work? Open? No? All right. Well, let's do this. Type in key, control alt K, assign, very important that you do assign and you do OK. So we go here and we go boom, control alt K, right? And you can take a look at whatever. I mean, look at how many groups, people, these are groups. These are groups of functions that this software has, you know, sort of like Protos. Every, all of these those softwares, we're actually using very, very complicated but simple application. So control alt K is this guy here. And uh, it's very important because what we're going to do now, which I forgot what I wanted to do, but there was something that I wanted to uh, actually emphasize for that is, well, okay, we set it up. I'm sure it will come up, come out handy. So second thing, colors, colors, colors are here. So let's colorize drums. That's my God, mistake. Let's colorize drums. Boom. Can I colorize the, the actual track? Red? No. Maybe I can colorize folders. All right. Well, it's it's fine. Uh, my God, what is this? Ooh, everything I touch becomes becomes red. That's fine. All right. So percussion, also drum color. Bass. We're gonna use something very bass. My bass color is usually this. Uh, drums is actually brown. We could go with an orangey. No, there's no orange. So we're gonna do red. F. Uh, bass, again, guitar, uh, not this one, uh, orange, uh, synths and effects, clearly in my land, violet, strings, yellow, it's actually green, but verse box, these two people, we're going to make very easy green, and all of these, all of these people here, we're going to, oh, and I remember why I wanted, why I wanted to time lock this. Oh my God, I don't want to make my, my mic full. Uh, let me just tweak, twitch this little thing around just so it's a little bit easier for you. All right. Um, what else? Mm, chorus Vox. Okay, all of these people we're going to put in a nice lighter green. No. We're going to put in a nice pink thing. Okay. No, I'm telling you what, my brain just doesn't want that color for some reason. So we're going to use a light, lighter green. All right, kind of works. I'm going to use yellow anyway. Well, all right. So now that we're very, very, very colorful, I'm going to do the same thing here. So when you go to preferences, you go to, um, uh, bear with me for a second, you go to audio editors, event display, one row. Hold on, hold on. I'm prepared. I know what I'm doing. It's a display thing. We can color the actual mixer. Oh, there we go. User interface. Track. Okay, so colorize tracks, folder tracks, and mix console channels, please. So now, use tracks, the full color, last applied, random. That's fine. So why doesn't this work? Hmm. Use track default color, use previous tracks, mix console channels, maybe not. Nope. That also should work. Color strength, a lot. All right. Ah, because we haven't colored tracks. That makes sense because I didn't have that. Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's, that's good. Let's go defaults and go like this. Apply, bye. So uh, let, me, let me take a look at this. So drums. Uh, can I colorize this guy red? Yes, but it isn't red. Oh, yes, it is red. Yes, that's what I wanted. Percussion and this red again. So I should have done that function before, but it's okay. Purple. And you might say like, oh my God, that's, that's so much time for nothing. I guarantee you this is super important because our brains are used to some specific colors and stuff. At least mine are. Mines are, I don't remember. English is going, oh, fading, slowly fading away. Green, did we use green for this? Yes, so green. I tend to press that little button, which I, I shouldn't. Verse box and all of these guys fall here under the yellow again. And we're gonna use red again for our bus. So, all right, so maybe drums, we shouldn't use red. Red is like the 
the important color. So we're going to use orange anyway. So obviously we don't have the huge selection that Protoss has. Maybe we can tweak it somehow. I don't really need that much leverage. I wouldn't actually color the verse now that I'm thinking. Can I set event color to track? CN, maybe Azure. All right. That's a little more balanced color palette. So we have the colors. We have these. We're good to go. There's one thing I wanted to do before venturing in, and that is um, here. I'm trying to follow my own idea of what I want to do. So, all right, let's do this. Things are too loud. First thing, we're too, too loud. So you should, I recommend you trim your session. What does it mean? It means taking this and do a volume change of these clips. Now, I don't know how it's done here in Cubase. I know that, that for example, time warp, comp, zoom, mute, glue, split. I'll do it my way. You can clip gain in Pro Tools, right? But you can also do it the old school way. So instead of moving the fader, don't move the fader. We're going to use the fader later on when we need, because if we do this for every track, it's just going to be a mess because it, you're using something that is post everything in the processing. So I wouldn't do it. So let's go where the signal starts in our chain, which is this here. So we're now looking at the inserts or we go F3 and we go inserts and we call gain. Is there anything with gain? No. We go uh, trim. Is there anything with trim? No, dynamics, maximizer. All right, let's go look at the dynamics. Something that is from Pro Tool, from Cubase. Uh, compressor, maybe? No. Deesser, expander, gate, limiter, maximizer, EQ, maybe, maybe uti utilities, something. Other, other makes sense. Splitter, verbum, pitch shift, plugin alliance, PSP, reverb. Sound toys, spatial panner, SPL, surround, synapse, toggle tools. I like tools, tools, but there's multiscope, Z plane. Can't believe there's no trim. It has to be. There has to be distortion. No, let me take all of these stuff away. Ambisonics, channel G, compressor, envelope, expander, gate, limiter, mitigate. Some simple gain, people. I think they have it. I definitely have it somewhere. So let's use Studio EQ. But no, there should be trim. Expander, the Sir. Kind of baffled by the fact that there's no trim here. I remember there was in Cubase. Why isn't it here? Pre-routing? Maybe there's a there's a pre-volume thing. Hmm, let me see. Gain. There's no gain. Magneto. That's a beautiful plugin, but that's not what we want. Trim. Maybe volume. Movement. No. So, all right, I'm going to call it with uh, with a simple EQ. I think we should have it here. Carve EQ? What is it? Ah, oh, that's Voxangle. No. There's plugins I don't even remember I have. I feel so ashamed. Boom, Dynamics, Deesser, Expander, Gate, Limiter, Mitigate. Well, I'm going to use Limiters. You know what? Ha, <laughs> look at me. Here's what we're going to do. Limiter. I like this. So we're gonna we're not gonna use the actual limiter, but we're gonna use it for some tracks. So that's 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 all fine. Let's do this. Let me just take a look at the inspector before I commit to this horrible move. Chords equalizer, because you see this thing. See, okay, this volume is post fader, so we don't we don't want that. But there's a lot of stuff that this thing has. Fader, quick controls. See, you can use the inspector if you want. For example, track versions chords, the equalizer, there's the inserts, the sands. So you have a lot of controls here that you can pick. So, okay, okay, okay. We're going to trim it this way. So the important stuff is that we don't use the limiter. If you don't have a trim, which I apparently can't find, you can put a limiter in and we can set the output to zero and we're going to trim the input by, I think, like minus six. That should work. So that was stereo in, which obviously we don't need. So let's move it here. And then let's copy it everywhere. Let's hope this works. It should. So now I'm basically trimming the whole session by six. Right? Look where I am now. Right? Now the buffle is super low. 
which I'm fine with. But I'm floating around the level which I like. The limiter here, this track, Mix Bus, I want to make green. No, actually, we said red, right? Yes. Red. Go red. Right? Okay. Okay. Because the limiter itself here, we're not going to touch. We're going to go one slot down and we're going to actually keep at zero. So how about now? See, we're still over. <laughs> Me likes this. So we're still loud, people. Do we care that much? Because remember, this is minus 14. So we should probably, we should. Let's limit something a little bit more. So I would say, let's go minus nine. Let's be proper. Minus nine. What happens if I do this? Ah, it replaces it. All right. What happens if I do this? Take it out. No effect. Discard all changes. Discard. Uh, what if I do this? What if I do this? Ha! Okay, so Alt Shift, people. That's that's the thing. Keeps working. Alt Shift. So copy, 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 copy. Why did I go minus nine? I don't know. I have an OCD thing. I like to go. <laughs> I'm sure there's a trim somewhere. When I'm when I'm gonna find it, I'm gonna like, oh no, there was a trim. So we're now minus nine. So this thing. We don't want it. F3. So very important, we're good in level now. We're good and we have good volume. We hear it, you know, it's fine. If you have issues with how you, you know, you listen to it, just raise your volume. I have a volume here on my mic. I just put it on maximum and it's again loud. It used to be not loud enough, but don't get tricked. You know, that's, that's your volume in the session you know, increase your volume somewhere else. In this case, on my headphones, the Corsairs have it here, a little, you know, pinwheel. And here I have it on the, on the microphone. So if you hear it loud, when you are, uh, when you're mixing it, at that moment, it, it, it becomes correct to your ears again. So you don't really need to, um, to have a loud volume in your session to feel brave. You can, you know, increase your volume in monitoring. That's perfect. So, all right, what do we have here? So the vocals are very low, in my opinion. So the first thing I would like to do is start working on the vocals right off. So I'm going to set a loop here in the, in the chorus. Here, let me see. Does it work? Yes. Uh, let me set this loop. All right. Now I would really like for Cubase to go back every single time to the actual stop position, but I have no idea how this is done. Unfortunately for me, constrained delay compensation. So, ah, uh, let me see. Maybe this thing, auto scroll, suspend auto scroll. Thinking it should be around here. What is this? Snap to zero, iterative quantize. Man, it's a beautiful interface, though. It really works well. You know, what is this? Go back, loop, line warp, grid. May all make sense. Auto scroll. I would go, I would like the playhead to go back, but I can use plus and minus. Look at this. You know? All right. So. I would start from the vocals, which are very nice, record, very nicely recorded. Uh, let's make some groups first, though. Let's make some groups, which, if I remember correctly, it's add group track. We're gonna make. We're gonna make. Uh, we're gonna make what? Maybe so: drums, bass, guitars, keyboards, vocals, backing vocals. Do we make six of them? It's like overkill, somehow. Well, let's make six of them and let's call them buses or submixes. And we're going to make them all stereo and we're going to make them all go to a uh, mix bus. And we're going to create these inside a folder. 
and I'm telling you why. Can I rename these? No. These are submixes. One, two, three. So we're gonna call these drums. We're gonna hold on. We're gonna call these drums. How does it work to go here? Ah, oh, here. I can do it. Bass, guitars, keys, uh, LDVs, BGVs. All right. We're gonna make another one. No, we're actually gonna make more of these. And these are gonna there, there's gonna be effects. So 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 so. These are group tracks. I think we can even hide these, for example. And if we oh no. Oh no. Show all channels. I only wanted it to hide it here. All right, all right. Hide select tracks to new folder, move. All right. Well, that's fine, that's fine. Let's keep it there. But I remember you could also hide it from here and not in the mixer. That's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the backing vocals to um, backing vocals. We're going to actually, these two are, uh, okay, yes, these are right. These are ver verse vocals. We're going to send to uh, LDVs, lead vocals, it means. These two are keys. And this might change. Guitar guitars bass i still want it to be educational if there's people here that might be also i don't know doing their first mixes and stuff and they were like you know i wish i knew more or whatever this is how you know more you know and if you have questions just ask that's that's as easy as it is so now we're doing this we have all the different groups right and our mix bus so we can take these out. These I like. I can see all of the tracks. I'm gonna hide this. Can I hide it? No. Can I remove it? No. Probably because it's a stereo. Thing. Okay. So sounds good. Let me color all of my. Let me color this guy red. It doesn't want to stay red. Maybe because it's a mix bus. It can't get colored. Okay. I accept you not being colored. So these are groups, they're all yellow in my, my mind frame. Did I color them? No. Why am I not able to color them? Yellow. All right, maybe here. Maybe here. Oh, there we go. No, all of them. Okay, bear with me. Yellow. Bye. The yellow, yes. But now these guys are yellow. Oh, God uh bluish right on okay the cool thing is you can even make folders of this so you can you can tell pro tools like look this you should put into a folder and and um is there uh move selected tracks to folder and so you can call these for example drums and you know you can close the folder and all you see is the drums and that's fantastic could work I guarantee you that in virtual orchestra, this is amazing. So here there's not many tracks, so we can keep doing it this way. All right, so vocals. Okay, so first things first, I want to have a little bit more, I can go to the inserts, okay. Keep it here. Can I keep two at the same time? No, that's okay. So we have a limiter here for our vocals and we have, this thing fantastic so if i were to work on this song maybe i had a template already that i would import where i had effects where i had stuff where i had things around so i don't have a template here obviously but we can make a sort of a mock-up of that and use some compressors and stuff and things so what i would like to have is uh, add some effect tracks uh, and call it use no effect for now or maybe yes let me see create inside folder so let's call it effects let's put eight of them I have no idea and uh, oh well but well four have to be mono and let, let's do the four mono now the question is can i decide which kind of effect i want here maybe i can right if i go to the sense here f3 sense uh, I can put it to FX1. That's fantastic. Okay. FX1, 2, 3, 4. Awesome. So these are good. These are all good effects. Let me go back. FX1. So 
I know for sure that I want an LDV comp. I would call it like LDV 1176. LDV, uh, I usually call it fatso, but it's not a fatso. Let's try like comp two. Let's call them like this. Comp one, comp two, BGVs, comp one, BGVs, comp, no, BGVs, whatever. Delay, maybe? Yes, okay. Let's do the first two compressors because this is going to be pretty important. So, lead. Regrets to drive so that's our lead. Part. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the thing. Okay, I'm going to use another limiter to here, but I'm going to go a little bit louder. And now we've spoken. Let me see how much. Ah, okay. So this is an up this is an upwards limiter. So your limit is always gonna be the zero, and then you're gonna have uh, the the output which is gonna go lower than that. So I wanna try one one millisecond. Regrets to drive our minds apart, and if we ever deny ourselves. A We'll know the thing. So Cubase has two buttons. It looks like it has an activate and deactivate, which is gonna save resources, and a bypass. So we have to go obviously bypass to here comparison. And now we've spoken now vows again. We know we won't allow. So you see what I'm doing. I want to take some of the very high peaks that this thing has, and I already want to um, to sort of, uh, let me see, yes, H was the button. So I wanna take some of these very high peaks here in this area in the chorus, and I wanna kinda tailor them. Oh, regrets to drive our minds apart. So let me try auto-release, never tried it. Oh. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just streaming 3 dBs, something like that. The scale is a little bit hard to see but it's just like very very mild i could have done it with the first limiter for sure but i want to use this just for um for gain so i don't care about that we'll know the things so i'm gaining some volume and i want to copy these on the other one All right, so the level is there. We got a lot of a lot of uh, things in the middle. There are two two in the middle to be to be understandable. So we're gonna take these verse vocals and we're gonna pan them all the way left and right for now. So this goes here, this goes here, but we're gonna mute them anyway. So I don't want to hear them now. Just Okay, just those two. Oh, fantastic. This is what I want. I want to have this loop. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets. To we can hear the headphones, I think, because I muted everything but the lead vocals. And I can hear the headphones. That's, that's cool. So if we go here, let me see, how do I scroll this thing? Like here? Okay, I hear, no. How do I scroll this panel? Man, there should be a scroll wheel function. There, I'm sure there is. So let's... To drive our minds apart. But, and if we ever deny ourselves Let's put these as again, zero 
well, one, two. Let's do auto release. So we can't go over zero now. So the thing I would like to fix now is they kind of sound a lot kind of, you know, pre-processed in a way. They're a little bit sharper now because of the limiter that we have, uh, but we're lacking some sustain. So I want to try and compress these in parallel first, actually. Or actually, no, I want to compress them anyway, a little bit. Uh, a little bit normal normally so dynamics we're gonna go into what um this uh cubase has so compressor right yes that's the steinberg compressor so uh two to one no four to one one millisecond hold i have no idea 100 analysis all peak uh dry mix zero so ooh, that's pretty that's pretty intense it's got a lot of stuff Soft knee, high ratio, no, soft knee. I don't want the soft knee and I don't want the high ratio. So let's try and compress this guy. And now we've spoken of ours again. We... That's the second vocal, this guy here. We know we won't allow regrets to drive okay. our minds apart. Let me go, where's the, th where's the threshold? Where's the threshold? Oh, <laughs> here's the threshold. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the things we have to do. To okay. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets to drop. So the soft knee kind of sounds cooler. I don't want the makeup game to be auto. Okay, these are like, let me hear how it sounds, just copy pasted. So they saturated the, the, the mic a little bit. Alright, alright, sounds cool. I might move it below here and put an EQ before. Because it could... Let me put EQ. I guess there's studio EQ, right? That's good. I kind of think it's a little bit like it, it sung in a in a booth. I don't know. It's not a bad thing, but and now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the thing. There's plenty of air already, but there's a weird. We have to do. I'm gonna use effects. There's like a lack of mids to me. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets to drop. Okay, there's no filters here that I can engage. I would like some filters. So I'm gonna move these once more down. Uh, is there high pass? Maybe filters? Filter bank, dual filter. Dual filter sounds like something that, yeah, definitely not. It's a cool one, but it's not what we need. So we're gonna use Studio EQ again, and we're gonna do cut, cut, boom. Yeah, but we don't wanna use dual filter. Sounded cool. Where's my, oh, okay, hold on. I lost my, my EQ. <gasps> Man. All right, so copy this beneath here we have and edit this. To, and now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't allow regrets. 
lights to drive our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again I mean they cut so many lows in here I know there's a filter after but like they don't have lows even if I crank them up so I'm gonna go the same route here again, we'll know the things we have to do to and now we've spoken of us again we now we're gonna hear both of them because this vocal cannot be 100% the same I would say I, we have to sacrifice some of the lows we know we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again we'll know the things we have to do Sounds pretty good that way. I mean, I'm doing you know, random. And now we've spoken of us again. We know. I'm thinking with the effects. I don't want to overdo frequencies because if if I have too many lows, when when we put effects in there, it's just gonna be horrible. Let me see the. Oh, we won't allow regrets to dry. You hear what's going on, right? It's staying there. If I take the compressor out. The question is always like, do you EQ first, EQ first, or you compress first? Now I put the compressor first, but then I did the EQ after, but it's before in the chain. It's before the compressor, so I'm actually influencing the the compressor um, differently. So I have something that compresses all the time, and I'm pushing against it with the EQ. That's why I kind of kind of like it better that way. Now. In preparation for maybe, maybe the need of having even more compression, we're gonna call, uh, what was it, Magneto? The, I mean, they, they used to make a lot of them. Distortion, Destroyer, Grandulizer, Magneto. Magneto was like a tape machine, right? Soft Creeper. I think we're gonna use, no, what was Compressor? Mitigate, Vintage, comp vintage Compressor, people. That's what we want. Oh my God. This is, I know who you are. <laughs> what is it, like, this is, oh, this is a 2254, I think, right? That has these meters. So this is actually not something I would use on the vocals, but, you know, maybe it sounds great. So let's use another normal compressor for now. Apologies. I'm going to use these anyway. I'm going to set it to 4 to 1, pretty fast, pretty fast release, even maybe 50. Analysis all peak, no auto makeup, and let me go sends, and let me put sends here, and LDV comp one. Have our minds apart, and if we and we compress the, you know, hell out of this. Again, we'll know the but I'm muting it, so obviously we're not hearing it. The thing we have to do I would love to hear it where's this guy where did I put it LDV comp one right right are you come are you exiting somewhere we spoken of us again we know maybe I'm so effective that we oh I'm, 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 hold on regrets to drive our minds apart and if we ever deny it is working it is working it was so subtle that i was actually thinking like is it doing anything ourselves again we'll know the things we yes. have to do and now we've spoken of us again we Without regrets to drive. This is gonna help us when we have the full mix to be able to drive it in a little bit better because of the of the fact that the instruments are gonna push against the vocal and try and like make it sync and we're not gonna make it sync because that's uh, that's how we work. So this is one thing and now the second one though is gonna be a I saw tube compressor. I wanna see tube compressor dynamics. Tube com vintage compressor. No, not you again. Tube compressor. Nice. I know who you are as well. 
that's pretty that's pretty clear i don't think this is what i would use on uh, vocals but we're gonna try so we go to sense we go to ldv comp 2 this time which is our 2b guy and we just send a zero thing so let's go back of our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again let's take the first one out we'll a little bit know the things we have to do and now we've spoken our vows again we know we won't allow regrets to dry actually sounds old oh, sounds very cool and apart and if we ever deny ourselves again we'll know the things we have to do let me sidechain this guy at her. Oh, 500, right? That's, this is cool, but could be better, maybe. And now we've spoken our vows again. Okay. No, we won't allow. So see what I'm doing. I'm using the sidechain in band pass, and I'm focusing on the 2400, sort of like a telephone area, right? So we're driving it pretty hard. Oh regrets to drive our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again we'll know the thing we don't need that much the the problem here is that the room behind is super important when you track and you hear that i'm pushing things a little bit forward in a way that the room kind of becomes a little bit of a of a problem with this lack of, of depth and effects. I think and hope that the reverbs and short plates and stuff are gonna fix this because it's kind of very claustrophobic and very booty, 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 not boutique, like booty, not booty, but like sounds like it was in a booth or something like that. So again, recording is very important. There's a little bit of S's that are coming out, but I, I'm, I'm not minding that much. Let me see if this, well, we'll see if I address it later. Go to the sense, send this guy to the first compressors as well, I think. Uh, let's put this to zero and, and put it there. Alt, does it copy it? No. Can I, can I drag it? Can I drag it? No. Can I drag you? Can I drag you around? No. All right. So I have to do it by hand. Oh my God. So boring. All right. So let's hear these two. We have to do, to, and now we've spoken our vows again. We know. Right. So I would set it a little bit less, but that's kind of kind of works. Oh, look at that! Got a channel somehow. Hold on. Did I use this? Ah, okay. They're all off. All right. So it's got a cool chain. Every channel's got a cool chain. We're gonna use these maybe later for the vocals. So, awesome. We got the vocals. I would do the effects. And uh, the drums and the bass and the rest of the stuff is not super um, busy. So vocals are incredibly important. That's I would still focus on these. Uh, so compressor we've done. Um, let's do these a lot. Let's call these LDV, LDV verb one or LDV room, I don't know, because I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Verb two, let's call it that way, verb one and verb two. These are going to be vital for this thing because we need to set an environment to drive our mind. and it's over, oh, well, we're duplicating that now, obviously. So here. Apart. And if we ever deny so let's go to the reverb, 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 reverb. Let's use what Pro, what Cubase has. Revelation, reverence. Oh, these are these are super cool. Room works. Let's use room works. So one hundred percent, obviously. Uh, character time. Does it have um, impulses? No. That's that's fine. I don't want it. So pre delay. Okay, we're gonna go really short. We're gonna use some pre delay. Play with the size variations. I have no idea what it does. Lows and highs. That's what's fun. We'll know the things we Notice I'm not gonna move 
the fader on the um, on the reverb. I'm I'm gonna use the output here. Have to do, to, and now we've, we've spoken, spoken of us again. We know we won't allow regret. So these are filters, okay? Envelopes. These are minds apart. Where's the output? Can I set the output of this? Oh, I can't. All right, so I have to use the fader. If we ever deny right, low high gain, okay? To do, to, and now we've spoken of us again. We know we won't allow regrets to dry. No, it, that's not actually doing what I wanted. So let me see frequency input filters. I'll I'll put an EQ after. Let me try something else. Not room works. It should have been. I'm sorry. Revelation. Re reverence. Hello, Reverence. Let's try this. Have our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again. All right. This one, this one's doing what I, this one already sounds cool. My God, it's browse. It's browse for impulses. So we need some sort of short, short, short thing. So I'll try room. Absorptive stage. And we'll know the thing. We have to do. Can I browse? And now my... we've spoken of us again. We know we won't allow. Let's try something in studio. Large live stage. I want just a room, reflective maybe. Oh, regrets to drive. No. LA Studio was kind of cool though. Room of Masters. Of our minds apart, and if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know All the things we have to do. Not bad, but still not quite. And I'm working with reverbs. That's why it's super important if you have, uh, if you have templates, because you're gonna save yourself this pain for sure. But it's gonna start with this, like you. So everybody starts with no template, so room vox in space. Okay, let's try this. And now we've spoken of us again. We know we won't. All right, so this is what I wanted, but I'm gonna EQ it after because I don't have time to find the perfect reverb. There's just no such thing. Regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the things we have to do. Okay, something and like this. Now we've spoken of us again. We know we won't allow. This is kind of cool. Now, this is the one. I want the two as well. Let's try something. I, I, I made a vow to use just what Pro Tools has, uh, Cubase has. So let's try, what was it? Re Reverence? That's the same thing. Okay. Let's go with verb two. Regrets to draw. And this I want it to be a longer one. So maybe a stage kind of thing. I think that one of the reasons why this is a problem, I'm telling you why this is a problem, because we have mono stuff and these are stereo impulses. How about that? Add track, effect, stereo. S see this. That could, be, that could be the reason. Let's put this too, right? And let's go back to the mixer. And let's let's go here. How how do I scroll on this? Okay, like this. Let's drag these guys down here. And I'm thinking that magically things are might gonna work better. And now So we're not gonna use this, right? 
Oh, we've spoken now. And we're gonna put this to FX5 and FX6. We're gonna ditch the others. Oh my god, that's... Uh, it wasn't quite doing what I wanted. Of course, I bet it was kind of a mono thing. Again we know. So, it's, it still sounded very good, uh, but that's, that's the way I wanted it. So now we need something. I'm gonna go back to the room works. I trust you, room works. You can do it. You had something like this. Come on, it works every time. How come it doesn't work? Here? Oh yes. Our minds apart, and if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the things we have to do. Let's try and lower it. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Save the day. So, stereo people, it can be important. So, let's ditch these two. Uh, delete, 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 delete. Remove tracks, remove tracks. Gotta be somewhere. A track, a track, move. Okay, global. I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you from here. LDV verbs, remove, yes, thank you very much. So this is now our LDV verb one, LDV verb two. Awesome. So these two people. Regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny Oh, sorry, that's the compressor. Again, we'll know the things we have to do. I'm telling you what, this could also be EQ'd. Stereo, studio EQ. And now we've, we've spoken spoke. our vows again. We know we This, won't. just this. Take some 500 out. You see what it's doing, right? It, sorry, you hear what it's doing. You also see what it's doing. We mostly hear what it's doing. No regrets to drive our mind. It's saving our ears, especially my headphones, from hearing things so mono that it's destroying my, my brain and capacity to think. So let's do the same for the second vocal. She have to do verb one, open up. Verb two. I would still treat them kind of identically in a way. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the things we have to do. So no sense, no inserts. And now we've spoken our vows again. We know we won't. So we're still kind of bright, still kind of bright, but I, I like it. I like it. I like it. I want to put two delays. We're getting to that modern, you know, no compromising kind of uh, very SSL-ish a little bit, like highs, but I think I like it. So two, I want three more, uh, sorry, one mono and one mono, no name and two stereo. That's why it's super important. You do a template. I was against templates in my life. I guarantee you, you gotta do it. So stereo and um, so LDV delay. So this is gonna be our, this is gonna be our uh, distort LDV distortion. And this is gonna be our LDV delay. Oh, I already named it. <laughs> All right. Close yourself, fold down. So again, more sense. Everything revolves around. So you might ask, like, why he's gonna use a lot of effects on vocals, and there's not gonna be a lot more because I already seen this guy. There's not gonna be a lot of effects on single instruments. Well, the vocal is just one guy fighting against drums, guitars, and stuff that is amplified. So you gotta give him some, you know, power for sure. So let's do the distortion first. We shouldn't use sound toys, which would be what I would go for. So let's go for distortion. Uh, that looks pretty scary. So... Regrets to drive our minds apart And if we ever deny ourselves again We'll know the... Output the things 
we have to do. To and now we've spoken of ours again. We know we won't. What does spatial do? Hmm. Let me, let me, can I copy this guy here? Just to try it out without this? to drive our minds apart and if we ever okay 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 it's not exactly how i wanted it but we can tweak it because if you have an effect that you quite don't like how it sounds because it, it doesn't do what you want just put it there uh dynamics no distortion put it there actually put it here distortion Ah, that tube. What is that tube? That tube. Hello, that tube. You. I deny ourselves again. Well, Holy moly, that's the guy I want. know the things we have to do. Come on, oh, Oli. Come on. And now we've spoken of ours again. We that's that's compressor that's leveling our guy a lot so go here distortion we're gonna couple these oh, we won't allow to dry. here we could actually do more distortion here and then lower it here have our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again we'll know the thing we have to do to, and now we've spoken of ours again we know okay so i like to go the other way now i want more distortion more compression than the first vocal but i'm gonna drop the volume on this see i dropped it here oh, we won't allow regrets to drive okay I still think that this is fine. Let me do the delay. Then we, we are, we're done. Promise, promise. Delay, mono delay. Yes, I want one mono delay. So I need one. Oh, I need. Well, let's do mono delay on a stereo track. Who cares? Of our minds apart. And if also, they didn't use a pop filter. So there's a way to fix that, but it's still very annoying. If we ever deny us. That's beautiful, but. I would go A note. Again, we'll know the things we have to do. To, and now we've spoken of ours again. We know. Right, just that. No feedback, just something simple. It is very simple. It works. Stereo delay now, maybe a multi tap. I, I so love it for synthesizers. This might be, be too much. But again, RDV delay 2. Come here. Not destroying the other guys. Oh, we won't. Still doing pretty good, eh? For not opening this guy in 16 years. 16 years. Could do better, though. I know I could do. So, taps, taps, feedback. Uh, mm, oh, this is multi tap. Oh, no, no. The guy I want is stereo delay. Difference between the other, you know, the one on the bottom is obviously, you know, no feedback, no feedback, full mix, full mix. Let's go quarter note and let's go, I don't know, eight note triplet. Don't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the thing. Have to do to, and now we've spoken of ours again. We know. So you can hear it by just go dropping it, right? So I always make sure that we don't have as much. Uh, how can I say that? Um, well, there's a little bit too much feedback that we don't have too much lows actually at this time. We want so this one. Under yeah, like obviously the quarter note goes a little bit farther, so all right. Yeah. Regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll we don't have to open it too much. I 
am done. Okay. So we got comp, comp, verb, verb, distortion, LDV1, LDV2. That's okay. Do we want to put some delays on the other uh, double? I don't know. Maybe let me put it here and not use it. We'll see. Now, the, the bus, the actual vocal bus could use some, some EQ. Guaranteed it could. There's a little bit too many lows. Let me let me cut maybe. The things we... So am I closing this? This is fine. We have to do to... And now we spoke another again. We... That's very weird. Hold on, hold on. These guys should go out of this bus, right? So why am I not hearing it completely down? What happens? <gasps> What is going on? No. Ah, because it's the sense that are doing all that. Ops, oh, of course. These people are coming out of the um, the master bus. Yes, they are. So uh, if we take all the effects out. Oh, we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. Okay. And if we ever deny that's pretty weird. Hold on, what's going on here? So um, I have an insert, right? And these people are going out of their, what is the routing? Let's open the routing. Ah, there we go. This is wrong. So you go out of LDV, my friend. Ah, so we, we did some mistakes. <laughs> we did, <laughs> you did, you did some mistakes. So cool thing here, we have the routing. So we can set, no, no, no. So I think if we, just select them all here and go to this and we do alt shift right no bus nice so these two go here these two go i know there's a little bit of a mess in the in the um colors i don't care come on it's fine it's fine mix bus this goes to bass now it works this goes to drums this goes to drums so we have drums bass guitars i like how it's put that you see them on top Guitars, keys, keys, lead vocals, BVGs, BVGs, BVGs. Fantastic. So now, now it works. And I wanted a bit less lows. Let me find where, but I can't change the Q here. Around here our minds apart and if we ever deny all right so now this would be an awesome point to put a multi-band compressor there we go look at this multi-band compressor by steinberg again ourselves. because there's not a lot of body now that we fixed it right so like this area i would like to have like a little bit Auto release, maybe. Ratio, one, four. We have can I change the gain of this? Have to do of course, I think I can, right? Auto, ratio, attack, re oh, this is the gain. And now we've spoken of ours again. We know we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever kinda, kinda, but not that much. C4 would be also that would be what I would use. Again. We'll know the things we have to do. Let's try with the lows. I don't think we need that many lows. And now we've spoken of ours again. We know. No, I don't want to use lows. How about here? Regrets to drive our minds apart. And it's kind of aggressive, huh? Uh, even at one, I mean, it's two one, so. And if we ever deny ourselves again. Can I saw? Yes. Have to do. And now we've spoken of ours again. So you see where this is going, right? It's getting too processed. I don't like this, but we know we won't allow regret 
cats to drive our minds apart And if we ever deny ourselves again We'll know the thing Alright, let's try this we have to do Okay, okay, not, 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 not that bad. Uh, BVGs, BVGs. So now there's obviously this was the single bus. So how it is with the effect, with effects? Effect. And now we've spoken of us again. We know. Okay, so these people go all to mix bus, which is fine. We won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves again... Here, okay, comp one is where we get the grit, right? So we don't need that much from here, we can control it from there. All right, so, good. Where's our backings here? These two people, so, you know, the question was about how would you do the backings here? I'm gonna show you how we do the backing. So first... And we'll know the things we have to do. These two people would be here, right? Here, backings, open All up. Right, now, there's a few more days. So you're here, now where we are, right? This is incredibly uh, weak. So we limit it, which kind of works. And now we've made up our minds to So I would do this, I would still EQ these people. To see this through, we worked it out a little wiser than before. Okay, and then I would um, uh, recompress them, yes, a little bit. Let's try and see where we were. You hear, I'm taking, I don't know, in your headphones, if you have headphones, you can hear it pretty, pretty well. There's like a lot of energy in the lows. And now we've made up our minds to and if we ever deny ourselves again, we'll know the thing. Telling you what, there's one thing we have to do I, that I don't really like of how this thing was tracked. Pardon me, but was the it's the the fact that there's like a weird resonance in the mid area. And now we've spoken of us again. We know. I think it's this part, but has to be a little bit before. We have to treat these before, before here, like here, this very moment. We have to do it, you know, essentially offset the low frequencies. Oh, we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we okay. deny ourselves again, we'll know the things we have to do. Okay, let's control this. And now we've spoken of us again, we know. Man, it kind of works in auto. Is it auto release? Yes. Oh, we won't allow regrets to drive our minds apart. And if we ever deny ourselves. But it looks like there's an auto gain, which is not there. Am I getting again, we'll know the things we have to do. Okay, I'm getting some lows as well, so I'm gonna take this into account. And now we've spoken of us again, we know we won't. You, you saw the meter, right? There's a moment where the lows go up, even if we can't really hear them. Right? Regrets to drive our minds apart And if we ever deny ourselves again We'll know the things we have to do Kind of wooly, but then let's see And now we've spoken of us again 
again we know we won't allow regrets to dry okay maybe this maybe this our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again we'll know the things we have to do it's a saturation of the mic presence that is making the one I have a little bit more Ooh. more too present right but Ooh. we're thinking well and now we spoke again we know. so let's put a little bit of a reverb thing in here as well like the two and maybe the second delay but not distortion no nothing I think maybe I'll, I'll back it off a little bit the other ones but we and drive our minds apart and if we ever deny okay i think we've worked in isolation for so long i don't i don't let me check these people here again we'll know the things we have to do and now we've spoken of So this vocal, the one on the left, needs a little bit more help on the highs. So why is it not coming up? Why do I hear it centered? All of a sudden. This guy... This guy I hear completely right, but this other one I hear completely le I hear completely centered. Right now. Oh, I know why. Hold on. Did I? All right, I bypassed the panner. I'm stupid. Oh. I, I didn't know there was a bypass panner. That's pretty cool. Oh. And now we've made up our minds to see this. Nice. Okay, so Studio EQ, please go here as well. No, copy yourself. Thank you. How do you copy this? Write this. All right. So this guy. So with the vocals together. That's how I would treat them. I would just take some of the low, the mids out, like five, six hundred stuff, and just open up the sides and you know it just kind of works let me put the river back maybe we know, we i kind of like it drier in a way i think it kind of works if it wouldn't i would probably still put a limiter here sometimes i do have it with the waves and i can l2 or something on also to drive our minds apart and if we ever deny ourselves again you see it could work but I, I i wouldn't use it because then it becomes very spitty and you have to kind of change the way the consonants come in so sometimes you expand it as to the, I, I think it's kind of it's not a song that requires that much processing although we're doing quite a lot let me take the others since the, the, the topic was how you treat vocals so we have these two let me go to the final chorus here we were fine we've changed perhaps it's good okay same thing here there's really nothing to kind of invent Studio EQ, Studio EQ, Compressor. Let's see if this works. No, sorry, this is here. So, I mean, they're the same, I think. Right? We got this. Maybe here we can use some rhythm. See how they're radio-like, kind of? Right? Where is... Where, where, yeah. Right 
I'm telling you what, there's even too much, uh, too many highs in this one. So I would still keep it as is, but I would use another studio EQ to maybe cut some. Yes. Here, there's no because they're they're singing a little bit different. There's not a lot of of that. So how it is with the river? Oh yes, that's fine. That's that's what you have, need to have a little bit of a reverb thing that just makes it easier for the blend of the thing. Okay, 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 hold on. Now, why has this changed kind of a little bit, right? Maybe he sings it differently? For us to share. Oh, this is compressor now. It's changed the part. Fine, we've changed. Perhaps it's good, perhaps it's bad. And though we've never belonged before this way, it's grown on us. It's good enough. And that, that part, uh, it's a little bit of a for us to share. Gotta keep it under control here, right? Right? And you Okay, okay, okay. Nice. The last one I have is this person here. There's two, right? Two of them I haven't done. Same drill. Limit them. Okay. Let's try it with all of them. Hear how it works. Who's singing here? Ah, oh, this is just like the ending. Okay. So here we need to put some mojo because this is actually the solo part in the end. So two distortion delays. This is kind of a, takes the lead again. Well, it's kind of a Radiohead kind of thing, vibe. And there's this. So here we have to limit this guy even more. Okay. Let's try and see where we are. Here, boom. It's Let's copy this. Okay, a little bit. Maybe we're cutting a lot of stuff here. I don't think we need to. I kind of liked how it was when we backed it up, right? Here. We put a loop on this. Same thing here. Now, this is more of a question of style because it's getting a little bit like radio-ish, right? But 
I think that if we do a couple delays, not this, may, maybe the second compressor, I don't know, just because it's the one that. It's about the, the combination of how it all works, right? Let me put this reset. Can I re can I reset this? Well, I'll do it. Could be also multiband compressor. Yeah, okay, could be. It's okay, so everything is pretty much dehydrated in a way they might say like, oh god, this is like incredibly dehydrated. That's true, that's true. But when we start dropping in all the instruments, things are gonna take a lot of space, like a lot of them. How do I... Solo defeat, control alt click, okay. Else, oh, okay. Solo defeat, control alt, control alt click. Okay, this guy, defeat. Oh, the defeat is nice. I want to defeat all of them. I want to hear the basses all the time. So, how do I take the master? So, all with the, that's it. Right, 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 right. Very cool. So we took a, like a complete, like a more of a hip hop kind of side. Let's go on the drums now. Take a look at this and let's do a bass compressor for the drums. I'm not going to change this much. Reason being is I don't need to. But now finally we have more vocals that we do have, um, that we do have drums and the rest of the stuff, right? So we are, we can easily back it up, you know, need be. But let's try and see to make a new compressor for the for our uh, drums so effects channels let's drop another one here add effect let's do two maybe no let's do one let's do the let's do the, the, the vintage how was it called vintage comp vintage compressor i want this audio outputs mix bus create inside folder so drums comp because we we can only go here and put it here. No, in the sense and go drums comp. Let's see where it goes, see where it takes us. Sounds cool. It's pushing a lot of lows, right? That's maybe... I would probably go something like this. Still going very off-board. A lot. So, in his opinion, I'm very loud. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I can hear it. Why was I fooled by thinking it was? Two hours mixing, people. So, while you work on the compressor before EQ, after you put EQ before compressor? David, that's a very good question. So, why do you work on the compressor before the EQ, but after you put, but then you put the EQ before the compressor? The thing I really like is that if you only have an equalizer and you push a frequency, uh, think about it this way. Uh, it's like you have uh, you have some water, right? You have like uh, you have different. How could I say? Like you have different bottles of water. You have red. You have green. You have orange. You have blue. All right. You have I don't know. Yeah. You have red, yellow, green, and blue. Okay. You have these four bottles. So the compressor is something that says that no matter what you do. You're, going, you're always going to have, for example, three liters of paint. 
you cannot go sort of like ad lib on the quantity. So in theory, for example, you equalize, right? When you equalize, you take some of the red and then you take some green and then you take some blue and then you take the yellow and you take away some of the yellow. But in theory, you have no limitation on how much signal you can add. So you keep adding paint and suddenly you find out maybe you have five liters of paint, 10 liters of paint, 20 liters of paint. The compressor after the EQ is something that says, look, you will always end up having a little bit of the same quantity of paint. So when you put the red in the com and you, for example, you add lows, uh, which is the red paint in my example, the other types of paint, the other colors, because of the compressor, they're going to get reduced because the compressor is going to push a little bit more because you're, pu you're, you're putting more lows in. So the compressor is going to react. And in a way, it's going to contain your, your uh, modifications in a way. So if you put, if you, sometimes you don't want an equalizer. So you can put an EQ, for example, and just, I don't know, put plus 10, plus 10 on, I don't know, a very high frequency. It might sound weird or harsh or you know, it's like, oh my God, this is horrible. If you have a compressor after the equalizer, the compressor is going to sort of smooth out, smoothen out your moves. Because what it's going to do is the compressor is always going to push. So whenever you push the frequency up and you push plus 10, you're never going to have an effective plus 10. You're going to have a movement of the compressor, which is going to react more to your, you know, plus 10, but you're always going to have a balance. So you're going to have something that says, okay, he wants plus 10 on the highs. We're going to go minus two on the lows. But you're actually not doing that. It's just the compressor is always taking the signal afterwards and has to make a sort of an average of compressing the signal. So it's a sort of a pillow in a way. When you have a very sharp EQ move or you want to put something up and down, the compressor is always going to be there and kind of massage the thing. So I like to have it afterwards because it's kind of masking the equalizer in a way and it's kind of rebalancing the sound of of the equalizer. Sometimes I like to EQ after the compressor again, and that is because I like how the compressed sound is, but I just want to take something and put it like, like a highlight, like a very broad stroke. Or for example, the compressor brings in some, some harsh frequencies or some, or, or too many lows. For example, an 1176 tends to, when you fit it with with nice lows tends to have because it has no side chain. So it tends to go, mm, mm, it has to add a lot of bump, right? So when you have that unpleasant bump, you might want to EQ afterwards. But in general, what I like, it's like having a pillow after the equalization. So I can make broader strokes and I still gonna have always one liter, one kilo of paint, no matter what. So if I push more red, the compressor is kind of taking the yellow and orange out and it's and it's doing it in real time. If I don't have a compressor, if I add paint and I add red, the yellow and green are going to stay the same. And so then maybe then I want more green and then I want more red and then I have to take the green out. With the compressor, I just add red and the sounds, the other paints kind of go a little bit back. The most extreme example is if you have a limiter and the same principle works when you have a group of tracks um, and you put a limiter on them. So if you have four tracks, for example, four backing tracks, like I do have here, right? So let me let me fix these, these oh, well, let's, this compressor we'll see after. So the backing vocals are these people here, the blue ones. So if I put a limiter here on the sum of the backing vocals, here, let me put it here, limiter, I can do the same principle with a limiter. Some people hate limiters on buses, but there's a principle to it. Let's go out of order. Okay. So what happens here is the limiter is making sure that my signal is never exceeding a specific loudness. So if I push 
one of the two vocals or one of the four, let me go to where there were four here. If I push one of the vocal, you're always gonna be you're always gonna be in balance with the other ones because the other two are going to go back because of the limiter. The limiter is making everything always be the same quantity. So if I decide that one track has to be more, the other three will have to go back. If I didn't have the limiter, then I can go infinitely up and maybe I also clip the gain or, you know, I, or it just sounds bad. So it's more natural. Think about it as if you were playing on stage and you have a guitar player, piano player, bass player. If I'm playing piano and the guy playing guitar takes the solo, I start playing a little differently because I know he's taking the solo. So he's no longer the main guy. I'm he's I am no longer the main guy. He's the main guy doing the solo. So with the limiter, it's kind of the same thing because you bring somebody up. The limiter is always going to have the same quantity through it. So it's kind of making the other vocals go down. That's the effect. And if you do automation as well through a limiter, you're going to hear sometimes it kind of sounds more natural. It brings back a little more of the balance. Because the, the, the limiter says you can't go past 100. So if you make one vocal 90, the other vocal has to be 10. And it's a natural balance. Like you can't go indefinitely, right? All right I see you wrote, I understand. So that's a, that's a same theory approach on, on the vocals. Here, for example, we have four. You see the limiter is working, right? Without the limiter... If I take one of the vocals, like this one, the, the first, verse Fox 4, and I push it up, here the other vocals, they go down. You hear it, right? So it's never louder. That's very interesting. It's the same approach I use with, with frequencies. So think about these five vocals as frequencies. It's exactly the same thing. There's a quantity that cannot be exceeded. So when I go up and down, it just changes completely the balance, but I still have the same quantity of loudness, which is very important to mix. I'm sure sometimes when you mix, you go like, oh my God, this thing is too loud and you make it too quiet. Oh, but now this thing is too quiet as well. I have to make it louder. And it, the balance always shifts. So in Limiters for some people are a way to reduce the dynamics in a way it actually helps glue things together and the dynamics feel more cohesiveness. So if I had no limiter, right? If I have the limiter in, And you hear the other two lower vocals, they kind of go lower in volume. So with one move, I got three moves in one. I go up and the other two go down. Now, the quality of the sound, all obviously, if I'm cranking the limiter, it, it sounds quite bad, I would say. But I'm pushing 6 dBs, so it's obviously just a matter of a little bit. This actually sounds better. Same thing we can do on the, uh, let me copy these, on the lead vocals. So, it's good enough for us to share. So we go here. There's a very, very subtle balancing, like these three people are listening to each other and they're reducing their thing. So now I made it with tracks, but if you think about frequencies, it's exactly the same thing. You push the highs, the lows go down. So what, what you're interested in is getting a difference between the high content and the low content. And instead of doing two moves, you bring the highs up, the lows kind of go down. And that's why I like the compressor after the EQ. It's kind of the pillow, sort of a pillow thing. So let's go back to our drums. Now we have to run. Oh, it's season seven. That's fine. The, the producer is going to be back anytime. So. so drums, 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 drums here. Where was our drum kit? Yo, drum kit here. 
Ah, here it's, it's, it's in a cappella here. There's no drums. Nice. So we were compressing this. Always ask questions when you have them because some concepts are super tricky. And then when I explain them, I think I'm sometimes I'm pretty good. And I go like, you know, make a comparison with colors or stuff. You go like, aha, you know, if you don't ask the question, you never get it. So just, you know, that's why I'm here. So without the compressor, Right, okay, I, I like it, but there's a couple things still missing. The problem is we don't have separate tracks, so we're kind of effed, but I want some more highs. Let's go vintage EQ. Is there a car VQ? Uh, car VQ, it's not, it's a trap, it's a trap. Frequency, who's this guy? Ooh, hello Steinberg again. Uh, oh my God, eight frequencies. No, I refuse to use this thing. <laughs> Too much. We've more respect for us. No. Okay, let's go back to where the drums are actually doing something. I don't want this. I don't want these 500. I hate that I that I have I, I don't have control over the snare and that the symbols are always there, right? I wish I could EQ the snare and not have the because this hi hat is driving me nuts now. But I wish this the 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 thing was a little bit more intricate. So maybe there's a way to do it, but it's gonna sound like it's gonna sound like <laughs> it's gonna sound bad. Let's try and do. Mm, mm, compression like multiband. I think the multiband had a side chain, right? Yes. Oh my God, it has four side chains. So this is a cool trick. Let's try and focus on the snare. So I want to hear just this. So. Let's monitor this area. Right? That should work. And I want to focus on sort of like 440, which is like the snare, right? And a tight area. Go ahead. So now I'm assuming that this area is getting, you know, bumped up. I want to do the same here. 440. Okay. Five. Let's do the same here as well. Everything focuses on the snare. Tight Q. This. No, it's actually not. Ah, because it's monitoring this. Yes, okay, okay. 440 is fine. So we are hearing the snare. We're, we're hearing the frequencies of the snare. But we are going to operate on a different area here. Let's try and see if I can make it clearer every time the snare hits maybe I, I'm, I'm mm, or actually actually I should expand I shouldn't compress but I, I I think I can get this kind of sound It's doing kind of what I wanted, but I want to try with the... I hope the compressor has the... The expander has the... side. Oh, yes, the expander has the sidechain. So even better. Maybe we can even fake it better. So 440. And let's see this. Right. So threshold ratio. Uh, it should be upwards expander. Uh, we can't do it. We can't do it. This is doing the opposite. 
getting too complicated to do it. I don't want to do it that way. If you have upwards compression, like, um, let me see. Uh, this one doesn't do it. Full rise. Yeah, no. Uh, Mac DSP does something that you can push things up when the signal goes down. So you need upwards compression, which we don't have. It's okay. We'll, 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 we'll just go EQ and find an area. Come on, okay, we can live with this, right? Yes, just this. Uh, now let's do some some reverb. We could use the reverbs we've created for the drums. I don't want to. Let me see if I can make. How do I resize this thing? No idea. Okay, let's not let's not fiddle with things I don't know. So effect. Uh, it already has effect, but effects. What I want to do is try and do a tube compressor, and I want to call this drums comp two. And I want to use this because this was pretty good. This was really good. So I want to use a second compressor, which we're probably gonna use for other things as well. So this was really good. So let's let's solo exempt these two people. And let him let we wanna hear we actually wanna hear the symbols. So every time the symbols hit, we compress them. Okay. I kind of like it. Thought it would sound better, honestly. Oh, yes. No, no, no. It's doing what I wanted, magically, but... Okay, it's just making things better. The compromise is the kick is is it's breathing differently. So maybe we could use... I don't know, just a different... Let's take the clean path and take some multi-band. Uh, I hate that it's pumping a little bit, but it's just the nature of having everything together. Or maybe I'm not that good. <laughs> no, no, my excuses are always valid. Mm -hmm. Let's try and bring up some... You hear it, right? Boom. So this is the clean bus. I'm just checking areas, but that's kind of beefier. I don't want the auto release though. Nah. Okay, maybe this one was okay. Hmm. It's this this hi hat kind of kills me a little bit, but there's no way around. How about reverb we already have? Maybe maybe some delay. Let me try the second delay. Why am I not hearing it? Always conscious as to why. Aha, see? Nah, doesn't add anything. We don't need that. So symbols. Okay. Honestly, this is all good. The only good thing here is that we can compress the symbols in a way and the drums in another one, at least. Okay. Oh, yes. Less sharp, a little bit more 
surrounding percussions oh man these are these are weak let's compress them right away so tube sounds pretty good huh? this guy I'm going for so many highs. Okay, okay, okay. I want studio EQ a little bit. This is, we're gonna hate this frequency. So let's try and go here. And I want to put some delay here right away. Like a stereo delay is fine, and look how we're gonna use this. Look, look at how. So we're gonna go 100, 100, no filters, pan all here, delay. I don't want to sync. We go zero one. Ooh, that's horrible. Sorry for killing you. I also kind of died. So zero one, no feedback, all pan on there. 100% mix. This guy instead, we're gonna go maybe, I don't know, 22 milliseconds. Right, let's see. Ah, uh, but I don't have gain controls. Uh, that's a pity. I wanted these to be a little more. So, how about this guy? Okay, so we gotta make um, we gotta make a bus for this guy. I want this to be a little bit more moved. So percussion effect, let's add it below here. That's why, again, templates, people, they're super important, super. Let's do multi-tap and let's call these perks delay. Super important because they're going to save so much time. Where's the percussion here? Here, go here. So this delay, bye. Here, um, here. Perks delay, right? So let's go make this solo exempt. What's what this? This is a shortcut. Okay, I want this to be moving. So no feedback, or maybe eight. Uh, that's not the thing I wanted. Uh, what was it? Multi tap. Okay, then then stereo, stereo. So no feedback mix. One quarter, one eighth. Same thing but different. Got some noise. Ooh. Okay, something like this. And we're gonna put through a reverb. Let's use Roomworks. Right? Right. Man, it's super complicated, eh, this guy. It's got a lot of functions. Let's use just one. So nothing? Kind of working 100 <laughs> it's it, it's a bit weird because it has pre-delay even if okay it's better Why does it have pre-delay even if I don't have it? Mm. I want then I then I want the other guy who was it? Revelation? Oh no, Rev reverence. This seems trivial, but it's super important that we get it right. Okay, that works. Now, there, is there a pan thing here? Auto pan. 
Okay, that, that works. It's a little bit fast. Rate, one, sync. There's a mix factor. No, I don't want to, I don't want to move it too much, but just a little bit like this. There we go. Chorus, a little bit of chorus as well. Gotta do it right here. No sinking. Uh, it's always risky. I don't know. Maybe on the highs only. Bah, 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 bah. It's not kind of really working. Let's see if it's like this. But now, now it sounds more like a drummer, right? We can even... Okay, doesn't have to, but it has to group. Bass. Uh, did we... Okay, drums we've done. Okay. Let's check how loud we are. That's kind of... <laughs> I knew it. But that's that's actually cool. We're gain, gaining, gain, and gaining, gain, and gaining, gain, as we say, right? But, but see where I am? I'm like kind of scratching this, right? That's actually cool. I want to be here. I don't. I don't care. I'm like barely scratching this thing, which I usually kind of end up doing. So, percussions, bass. We said bass. Now this guy has no lows. I mean, it does, but it's kind of weird. So let me see. I mean, this is this is gonna be horrible. It just doesn't work. I know that. But a little bit of distortion would work. So let's do uh, the, the tube. The tube worked. I mean, I assume that's the sound they want. So there's no there's no way around this, but I would still use some reverb, believe it or not. I'm gonna try Roomworks again. I believe in this guy. Come on. Oh my god, it's always so dangerous. I have I have no idea. I have no idea how this will ever get to work, but we'll make it work. Don't worry. So let's hear it with the drums and the stuff. Oh yeah, it works. I still believe that it needs even something like this. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Second bass. Okay, this guy is the one in charge of the highs. So we do the same here. So you see what I'm doing? I'm completely cutting the highs from the high bass, the second one. I'm not... It's still got lows, but... But I'm compressing them. Let me flip phase and see if it works. I told you it was a complicated mix. I told you it wasn't easy at all. Because it's too much stuff in the end. Like, stuff that is different usually from from what happens right so
Well, they're surprisingly in phase. Okay, guitar. No, synths. Okay, let's think, let's think. What does this need? What does this need? Uh, it sounds a little bit mono to me. So I would want it stereo-ish. <laughs> I can't believe it worked like this. Like, I, I say let's not touch it. It's just weird. I have no idea how it can, but it does. Where are we? At the end of the song? No, here? Okay, who's who's singing? Ah, that's the chorus. So here we have, this is kind of a low volume, right? So I'm thinking this guy is not compressing. See, so it's not your fault, it's not my fault. There's one track, it's kind of recorded lower. That's my assumption. So we have to go in the first, very first limiter we put and go back up. It was just a matter of volume. Now, how do you realize that? Uh, you have to be, have faith in the plugins and in the effects and in the stuff you send. Obviously, I don't know these plugins at all. Like this is 16 years after I opened Cubase, but it gets a little bit getting used to, but it was clear that even if I was pushing level, I wasn't getting anything up here, right? So let's take this and push it. Okay, what I what I kinda don't like a little bit about this vocal in this part, which I would still add a multi-compressor on. I don't want to mess with too much stuff and just there's a sort of a high area here which is obnoxious. I like the style, I really like the style, but uh, it's it's the mic and I think the converter or just me, I don't know. So let's try a little bit more, um, a little bit more reverb. You Well, you know what? No, I think it's more of a matter of how I handle these two compressors because compressor one on this specific vocal is kind of adding a little bit too much edge. All right, so the distortion kind of worked here and this guy... Because these two vocals, if you remember, I've put into the chorus box. Uh, but chorus vox I put into BVGs, so they're going to the backing vocals. So the why, that's why there's a kind of a different attitude. But I really, really like how this works compared to this part. So, so let's go here to the verse and try and check the guitar. So what do we have here? A guitar. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take some EQ, studio EQ.
Okay, we need some delay. You know what? I'm gonna do with this. No, not I don't want this. Let's try just the eight and a little bit. So I'm gonna use this differently. So I'm gonna look what I'm doing. I'm gonna do a dry with pan 100, pan zero, sorry, here in the pure center. And we're gonna move the guitar a little bit, maybe right. Now, why am I doing this? You remember this part is where there's no strings, there's no nothing, there's a lot of vocals coming in. So if I move the guitar on one side, everything's gonna go um, a little bit to shit. Uh, that's the technical, technical term. I only don't like something here. Alright, so more volume, less 500 because there's things moving here and there. Who haven't we done? The strings. Okay. These are very realistic, like very, like a little bit too much. We're going for this attitude thing. There's no stopping us anymore, unfortunately, for them. So let's go again, stereo delay, because now we have all the bundles. We need the mojo. We need kind of the stuff here, right? And again, I'm gonna do no sync, just a little bit. Look at this, like this is a tiny little bit of. It's kind of, it's kind of going to help but I'm also going to use Tube, this guy we really liked. Man, at like 6.30 p.m. the sound of this thing, really like it. Uh, what I would do is I would try and send this guy to... His, suppose that you're in studio, you only have one bass compressor that you paid a lot of money on. Here, the drums are not playing. You remember we had one drums compressor that is the vintage one, right? So let's try and use that. Without. Nice. Okay, so we have like there's a hiss thing. I would go and denoise it somehow. So let's go here and put Magneto. I remember I loved this plugin. Loved it. It's super old. I don't know if you know it. I know it because I'm old as well. So we're going for Mojo, remember. Going for Mojo. Ah. Oh beautiful kind of darker sound and now we're gonna we're gonna obliterate the whole bus system with the full range of magneto because this, we're just testing stuff so how about we put tape on every single thing because we did everything now right so now it's gonna be super hard to hear the strings so let's pull these ldvs that's why i like the groups right And this at 6 p.m., sorry, 6.30, I have to give you like, this is a very, very good tip. 
I usually end up with having vocals louder than the average indie rock guy wants. So they're always asking me like, it's fine, but can we like drop it a little bit before? So I never, they never sync in my mixes. They're actually most of the time kind of more exposed. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm going back to zero. Right? You see, I'm pushing the drums compressor. And Davide before had asked, like, why do you compress after the EQ, but you do the EQ before? You do the EQ after the compressor, but you put the EQ before the compressor. This is now the same thing. I am pushing the drums compressor up from the strings. So I'm using the strings and I'm sending the strings to our drums compressor. It, it works. I don't know. I know the original one. I tried it one time in Rome. One guy was selling it and the original 2254 is just bellissimo. I don't know how the non-Italian people say bellissimo. It's, it's just bellissimo. And it's really bellissimo. And uh, uh, this is useful if you want to fake not being Italian, but why would you? Maybe to get a discount in Florence for a gelato. I don't think you'll ever get one. They don't give discounts. So um, it works. And if we had one expensive compressor, maybe we would use it for more than just a drum. So I've sent the strings there. The strings work. Now what I can do is I listen to the mix and there's just there's a little bit not not enough strings and everything else kind of works so by pushing the strings into the drums compressor the drums compressor now has drums and strings it's the same thing but in a different topic so it's got to make the drums and the strings dialogue together and it kind of makes things more interactive and musical Now, the strings patch is not the best in the world, but it's kind of have like a hip hop vibe, but I want to take some high frequencies out because the driving uh, You see, I kind of got it, it was a 2K. <laughs> yeah. Let me go back here. Where's the strings or the strings or is come back here. Here, I think this area is is what we need here hold on let me drag i'm incapable of dragging here in cuba so the 2k is horrible so and we can actually do this let's try Okay, okay, okay. Not bad. It, it's just this the string patch. That's that's how it is. There's no going around. So we st we still can hear some of the vocals now. Let's pump some of these guys up. This is remember, it's the clean vocals and the clean backings. Well, let's go where they sing. Here. Okay, another tip, the guitar is fighting against the vocal. You can tell, right? You can there's there's something that keeps pushing the the the, the vocal against the guitar and so forth. So the guitar has to lose. The vocals are more important. So two ways you can do it. Take like 5k and drop it down because the vocals are here, the part where you can really understand what it's saying. So one way to do it is this. Push it up where you can't really hear the vocals anymore. Push the guitar up in an area of frequency until you really have a hard time getting what the vocals are saying. And then go backwards. I 
think it's around here anyway, so. So one way to do it is this. You have to sacrifice things. You can't have everything at the same time. The part is has been written close to the vocals. The guitar has to be sacrificed. There's just no way. But this is a this is a cool way. It works. Another way to do it is just bypass every band and just use a multi-band compressor around here and compress it with a very fast attack and maybe also fast release. I don't know. So let's try to return to I always usually like this route better because it's dynamic. I think you agree, it sounds better than the other one. The other one is just like here. You, those frequencies, they're gonna die every time. Here, it's just moving, adapting itself, right? So I think four to, I don't know, four to one, maybe maybe it's a bit on a too slow release, but. No, I think it's fine because it doesn't have to come back up. So what else? Ah, oh, we were trying to use Magneto on everything. That This is our tape machine. I think it doesn't really work the settings we had. So Magneto, you, I'm sorry, you're all instead gonna stay here. But let's bring the, the backings up. Same thing, the keys, right? The keys are doing exactly the same problem as the guitars. They are fighting against that. So there's no need to go back and check anything. Just take the same multiband, drop it here, and uh, and do solo this guy. And compress it away. So let's try and see where, where are we here. Even the lows are a bit too strong. Because it says strings, this that's another issue. It says strings, it's not strings. There's something else here. It's no longer just the strings. So we gotta work this out by using maybe, yeah, multiband. You see, but it's like heavily, it's getting heavily compressed. So we would need to do this, duplicate tracks and take this guy here and then uh, zoom in. There's no other way. You got to do it this way and then use the scissors to do this because uh, I don't know the shortcuts and do this. So now we have a separate track, right? That's a clone of the old one this one and we go and inspect this single one oh where was this ah no okay that's fine that's fine that's synth and effects you i gotcha all right so it's synth and effects this guy here how do, what did I do? Oh my god, I don't know. This guy, the, the purple one, which we haven't really... Yeah, oh, too, too much. Too many lows, too much stuff, too many things. So, Studio EQ, cut the lows of this because it's gonna... Make it a bit lighter, check the strings. This we can probably castrate this way. 
I would drop it a little bit into the reverb. Nah, that's not actually working because we got the stereo delay, so we're okay. Maybe a bit more, a bit less. Do we have feedback here? No. Haha, <laughs> we're like super dry. Ah, they did cut it. Okay. Nice to score stuff. Okay, we'll go here. This is fine. So let's take the solo one. And this is the same thing you see. I raised the chorus box one because of the limiter on the BGVs. We get the balance between box two and box one just by not having to move anything else. And now we're going to use the limiter here. We're going to build our mix bus. Let's go back. Let's try this. Let's go minus three before. So, or actually, no, let's go zero. I don't care if we're clipping on the in. And uh, zero two was fine. And then we build the mix bus after this. I haven't done any mix bus this time because I don't know this plugin. So let's try Magneto. It isn't bad, right? It's kind of a, you know, <sighs> coloring in a way. I kind of like it. Maybe I'll put it after. And I want to use multiband. And we're going to do some cheap tricks. We're going to go uh, 100. We're going to go 100. Can I change it? Okay, 100. Uh, 3, 5, 10K. I have no idea if it's gonna work on this guy, but I'm gonna go 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4. 1 like easy, easy peasy. I'm gonna go 10, 10, 10, 10. No auto release. 100, 100, 1. Oh my god, I can't type anymore. How much time do I have? 10 minutes. Come on, I can't do it. No. So now we, we're gonna push this. Let's see where I get some kind of... Sometimes you see I get 1 dB. That's fine. 2 dB is fine. We go up. 1. Alright. That's it. Let's try the, the highs. That's a kind of a cheap way to do it, I know. Here, we probably have to go three milliseconds or two, but it, we have to be like super subtle, super subtle. So let's bring in this. Yeah, I, I probably already hate it. Not probably not gonna touch the highs, but let's go back to somewhere here. Here, beginning of the song, I don't know, halfway through here. Okay. Now this guy we have to go. How about here? So it's always massaging the four frequencies, right? Maybe it won't work, but nobody dies. It's fine. It's just a mix. Come on. Come on.
it kind of works. I don't think this crossover is perfect at 3.5. Maybe it could be lower, but I'm kind of, I don't want to, I don't know how to copy the settings. Oh, okay, switch between A and B. Ooh, copy A to B. Here we go. Let's try. Okay, maybe, maybe it's fine, but... I don't know, well, there's something about this that kind of works. I don't know, it just pushes it nicely forward. So let's try it with and without. I really like how we're going for modern, right? The original mix, I think, was kind of more a singer songwriter. And I want to completely destroy it and make people angry and make it a bit more in the hip hop kind of kind of fashion without being hip hop. So we're going for those high mids, you know, up until we can before things get too harsh. So we, so we go without when this is yellow, it's without. And when it's on, it's with when it's not yellow, it's engaged. It kind of opens up the sides a bit more. So I don't have mid-side control over this, but I think it's cool. So so it could be a little bit overkill, but we don't care. So now we copy the limiter and we, we kind of crunch things a little bit. Let's see how these limiters sound. Ah, uh, no, hold on, hold on. There's a folder called mastering here. Ah, but that's not, that's, that's not, uh, um, whatever. What's the word I'm looking for? That's not Cubase plugins. <laughs> so let's go minus one, sort of like we were in the Spotify region. Uh, and I'm going to tell you all about also like, let's pretend we're sending this to Spotify. So let's go auto release. Okay, let's try and push it a little bit. So on this limiter, when you bypass, you're going to hear it louder, right? And I don't want it to be louder. So here's how you have to do it. You copy A to B, you go to B, and you make a preset that doesn't push, that has zero, zero. Let's try this. Or zero minus six, or zero minus three. I have no idea. Let's try it. So what I did is I made two presets, like A and B, and I'm switching between them. The one that has zero input and minus three output is not pushed. I actually could go zero. Yeah, and it's too loud. So make sure the B setting is not gain redu reducing things. So this is our no limiter, because if I bypass, the volume's gonna go up and we can't compare. There's no way to compare. So A is fine. Let's you. Let's use A as the one that we're going to use and compare it to B. Same volume. I just want to hear if things get a little bit more glue, glued together. You see, these I don't like anymore. So I think three minus six was kind of fine. Right 
Now let's try the release though. The release is on auto, but I want to try one millisecond. It's going to destroy the song. Okay, I I put it on tempo. I don't really like it on tempo. Right like on on a full quarter, like two, like a full, mm, yeah, almost like bit like you know eight note dotted eight, no eight. I don't know. Oh, yeah, dotted eight note like mm -mm, and it ends up. Listen to the snare. The snare changes a lot. I like it even without the limiter, if I be honest with you, but kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of miss a little bit of the gluey thing. So how loud are we? Let's go here. Let's check the RMS. Seems we're fine. Uh, we don't have reference. We, we could could build the Spotify thing. We should be around minus. What is it? What is Spotify? Minus eighteen now. Minus fourteen now. And if we go past minus eighteen or minus, if we go past minus fourteen, we should go minus two true peak. So we're still within range. Let me let me double check uh, Spotify loudness levels. I can't type uh, mastering and loudness. How do I master? What if I always go and check because these people change all the time. So what if Spotify? What, how does my track doesn't? Let me see. They used to be. So the entire album will be played back in minus 14 dB LUFS. L-U-F-S. And if you are over minus 14, you should go, there we go. Loud is minus 11 dB L-U-F-S plus 6. Normal is minus 14 and quiet is minus 23. So we should aim for around 14 if we want it. So 14 to 11 L-U-F-S. Let's go here and, and tell this guy that our reference for short term is 14. Simple as that. And we type in, yes. No, minus 14.0. Yo, no. No, momentary. 14. Not short. Ah, all right. No, LUFS. Okay. Minus 14, momentary max, minus 11. It's fine. Integrated, minus 18. I don't know. Yeah, I'll go minus 14. And, and true peak, minus 2. Just for reference. With tolerances, 1 is fine. Reset on start. And go back. Where was this? Here. Right. How do I go back? Okay, like this. So this one up top is our reference. We're still lower than that, people. Now we're over. So we always have a minus, we were pushing three and we were going down minus three, minus six. So we can go for five. Remember that you are not changing the limiter behavior if you go over input. You don't do that, right? You go up and after you set the input, you're going to hit the zero thing. 
and then you decide how much you go down. So we were three and we were just kissing the limiter here, which we like, and we were minus six. So all we need to do now is just go a little bit up. And then you you play the entire song and uh, and you you check the levels and the scopes and the stuff you have and that's perfectly fine so and then you you see if you're over um spotify levels or not but you see it sounded kind of loud in my headphones but we were still lower than spotify standards which wouldn't be a problem that you will just get raised up but if you just want to be safe you know just a song like this maybe can go even to minus 12 i don't know 13 so it plays back as such. Let's go back to full rewind. I don't know how to do this. Man, I'm missing a lot of shortcuts. It's all right now. There's a few more days for us. I even wrote some automation 
only considerations I would do is that the blue vocal, for example, I would just cut and do a different kind of attitude in the beginning because it kind of comes out a little bit sharp in the in the behavior and uh, and then i i wouldn't i mean i did the automation really quickly i usually would do it just one by one like one track at a time but you know we were kind of running it fast so that's how i would do it but loudness wise we hit minus 1.9 which is okay we should have been minus point 2.0 that's okay integrated momentary we we range between minus 15.8 and a momentary of minus 12 so you know we're fine we have an amazing <laughs> uh, dynamic range of 5.1 so things can't really be twice as much louder or quieter but i i mean for genre that way i know i usually i usually don't trust a lot of dynamic i mean this is not an orchestra or, or whatever so that's it um you know that's as fast as i could go on something i wasn't using for 16 years so uh, you know that's as long that's how much yeah still thinking about how it comes that i haven't used cubase for 16 years but it was 2004 you know i've sent projects to people that use cubase but i haven't uh actually used it myself but it worked. Thanks. Thanks, Davide. Thanks for asking questions. Glad you liked it. And uh, I told you only 16 tracks. Look how much it took. Obviously, I had to explain stuff, so we kind of went slower. But if you're not comfortable with the dough and you don't have a lot of options around, you got to have to try stuff. So some things, you know, you have to go back and forth. But the principles stay the same. The idea of having some basses, the way I like to mix, you can do it in, you know, any doll you have. So next time we're gonna do the mixed loop again send me your music to info at fuseroom.com or alberto at fuseroom.com if you wish to just send it straight to my back and uh, we'll do uh, another one with your song so this one was from uh, somebody that sent me sent it to me i think not necessarily for the mixed loop but i wanted to take it because it was only brackets 16 tracks but we're gonna do your stuff send it over i'm gonna comment stuff and see you um maybe very soon we don't know so for those of you who are looking this not on the stream you people from the future thank you very much for watching people that have stayed here for all of this time thank you very much if you have questions just work you know watch it again and ask around so we'll be seeing you that was a live mix for this amazing um song in cubase pro 10.4 so thank you very much again we'll be seeing us around ciao ciao